Hey Trisha, check out this new song I just found. One thing about music, when it's real, they get scared. Got a slave before the welfare. Ain't no food, clothes, or health care. I'm down for guerrilla warfare. All my niggas put your guns in their ass. You really don't care. Skunk in the air. Make a nigga wanna buck in the air. From a buck locked up in the jump in the air. Shit is real out here. Don't believe these video. This fake ass in the street. Gotta pay to get some song on the radio. Really though, DP. As DJ Baller treats us to a mashup featuring Dead Prez, Blink-182, The Beatles, Wiz Khalifa, Dem Franchise Boys, Modest Yahoo, as well as 14 more artists, it's important to realize that while we are allowed to play it, DJ Baller was not allowed to make it. The U.S. has three major labels. Universal, which represents Dem Franchise Boys, and whose subgroup, Interscope, represents Blink-182, Warner, who represents Wiz Khalifa, and Sony, who represents Modest Yahoo. They each have licenses over their artist's intellectual property. Basically, for the past decade, they have aggressively fought remixing, distribution, and sampling of their artist's music. But the past decade has seen music sales fall 50%, and the industry has sued more than 35,000 people for music piracy, everyone from pastors to children. So, this is a little summary of the music industry's revenue stream from 1973 to 2009, according to the Recording Industry Association of America. In the late 70s, vinyls were earning the industry a fortune. Almost $63 per person was spent on music each year, and the newly popular cassettes were beginning to emerge as 8-tracks were slowly phasing out. Then, for years, CDs were all the rage, peaking just before the new millennium, when Americans spent three times as much on music as they do today. The reason? Free music. Remixes, YouTube, blogs, streaming services, and peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks. Two increasingly influential roles in, in music today are bloggers and remix artists, who have, who have become an increasingly large force in consumer resources with whom the labels must keep up. The labels, in an attempt to stay afloat and remain innovative, are turning to, are turning to new online subscription-based services such as Spotify, in addition to pre-existing services like iTunes. But what do services like Spotify do, and how do they attract users? Spotify is a Swedish-founded service where users can listen to their music live without the hassles of waiting for the songs to download. So on Spotify, users are allowed to create personal playlists, share music with their friends, access artist biographies, and find new music using the program's recommendations. Spotify has definitely succeeded thus far in creating a profitable freemium business through its large user base, low marginal cost to serve each new subscriber, and product, music whose value the, to the user increases over time. Spotify users have three options in creating the digital music so in using this digital music source. A free option, an unlimited option, and a premium option. With the free option, users are allowed to listen to 10 hours of music per month and have to wait through a few ads throughout the listening experience. As of September 2011, 1 million out of Spotify's 10 million users opt for the unlimited or the premium options that you have to pay for, which include unlimited listening, no ads, and on the premium account, a mobile option where you can listen straight from your phone. Spotify is successfully appealing to larger audiences as its revenues grew 458% from 2009 to 2010, expanding its audience and growing more and more popular in the United States. Another way the service has increased its user base has been through its collaboration with Facebook, which allows Facebook users to see what their friends are listening to. Okay, so the site is clearly popular among its users, but how do the record labels and the artists feel about it? Spotify emphasizes that by having your music on the site, you earn a royalty when your music is played. Also, since the music is played, all the music played is tracked, all participating labels and artists access powerful and in-depth reporting from Spotify. This is definitely the most appealing aspect of Spotify to labels, who have struggled through their decline in revenues as piracy continues to prevail on online music sources. Now, Spotify is home to music under Universal, Sony, EMI, Warner, The Orchard, and Merlin. So for those of us who don't want to pay, want unlimited music and no ads, there is an alternative. Well, there are lots of alternatives. As MP3 blogs, sites which post, review, promote, and promote music from artists and remixers at no charge to users have reached a critical mass, there's a need for organization of their content and easy access to their music. According to Elliot von Buskirk, the Hype Machine, or Hypem.com, which was started in 2005, is a live index and music streaming station consisting of whatever's being talked about on MP3 blogs. 
The site ranks the most loved songs in it, on their site at any given time. However, the same song does not remain on the list for more than three days at a time, giving users more diversity. The site has recently reached one million users. And not only does it allow users to discover new music, but a few clicks takes them directly to one of the blogs who posted the song, which usually provides a simple way to download the song free of charge. The site is decommercializing music, inspiring transparent communication of music between friends for the sake of musical enthusiasm without the industry's involvement. So how do they do it? Hypo uses a Creative Commons license, which, according to its website, develops, supports, and stewards legal, legal and technical infrastructure that maximizes digital creativity, sharing, and innovation. Under the terms of their license, users and people on the site can remix sh and share all of the work on the site, so long as it's for non-commercial use. However, not all of the blogs have this license, putting many of the blogs' legalities in question. Considering this is a free music forum, providing labels with no revenue, how do the record companies feel about sites like this? Well, supposedly the labels don't mind the hype machine too much because, like it or not, sites like it provide free musical promotion, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, the labels might not want it, but the fact that it's unstoppable and accessible to all internet users, they're looking on the bright side. It's At, at least these sites are promoting their music. Anthony uh, Voldokin, the, hype's found, the hype machine's founder, said, I think it's an interesting, honest way to help consumers discover new music, which... I totally agree with. He says, by exposing a new voice, they can trust, and that's a big deal. Consumers don't trust a lot of sources. They have certain percep they have certain perceptions of why music is in those particular channels. I've had more positive conversations with labels about the hype machine. Now this leaves us with a final question about which we can only speculate. What does the future hold, and can these two services coexist? Well, ideally for labels, the companies to whom they supply their collections will, will eventually get enough subscribers who rely, deep, who rely on their deep library that both the services and the labels will profit. Maybe the labels only hope for success. Looking down the road, music services like Spotify and the Hype Machine, in my opinion, will eventually grow apart. Spotify will grow away from services like Hype Machine and more towards those like iTunes, where its main goal will be profits and conforming to the desires of huge record labels that own the music industry. The Hype Machine will grow in the other direction, becoming more of a user-friendly website where the creative commons will thrive regardless of the desires of record labels. I think the two uh, services will grow together until they become very similar, each taking the best of each other's services. The Hype Machine, for example, could definitely benefit from Spotify's deeper library and recommendation aspect, and they may, and they may eventually want to draw more revenue than just advertising, i.e. creating a donation or, or subscription program and Spotify could benefit from the, from Hypem's personalization and artists and blog following system, its rating system as well, and its MP3 reviews and user-friendly layout. It wouldn't surprise me to see the two sites go in a similar direction. I guess we can agree to disagree on the direction of digital music sources like Spotify and the Hype Machine, but one thing we can definitely agree on is that the consumption of music is evolving. And with that, we'll leave you with another tasty gem from DJ Baller. I hear music in my head, and I need to get it out. I make it hard. What the fuck?